So if you make champagne, most sharp, at least half Chardonnay, champagne is normally Chardonnay. Chablis is Chardonnay from Burgundy. Fully, fully more Moirache from Central Burgundy. And then if you go to Australia or California, where it's much warmer, much hotter, still Chardonnay performs extremely well. It's incredibly flexible red variety. The only red varietal I think has it. You can get to the last bit again. The whole thing about the Chablis, I missed that. So Chablis, fully Moirache or Chardonnay, and then so so too would be Chardonnay in Australia or California. He's talking of, uh, uh, he's talking of Chablis is part of Burgundy, a separate part. Yeah, yeah. Put it in Florence and we are in Burgundy. Burgundy, so. So, so very flexible. Uh, the only red grape I think has this match actually is Syrah, which you can also grow in cool climates and hot climates. Very few red grapes have the same flavor. So Chardonnay is relatively easy to grow. It's a, it, if you were going to be a new winemaker, I would say start with Chardonnay because it's one of the easier varietals to grow. Um, and it gives you a lot of ability to grow wine. As a, as a varietal, and you can taste it here, it doesn't have the acidity of Sauvignon Blanc. Forever, apart from say something like Chablis, but very, very cold. It's actually a slightly different wine. It's not sweet and acid, it's a much creamier, rounder style drink, even in a cool climate like this. And so it's a textural varietal with a very creamy mid Flavour wise, it can change. If you grow it in Chablis, it's quite cream and fresh. If you grow it in Central Burgundy, it's more melon, some sort of tropical, slightly semi If you grow it in California, or Australia, it's very tropical, very intense tropical fruit. And New Zealand, I would say, is back more towards the map on the kind of happily fresh side. You can do lots with it. You can either ferment it in a stainless steel tank, which gives it, allows the fruit to respond in its own, and give you that freshness. Or most people play with that play around with oak for sure. So the oak fermentation process, and it is fermentation with wine, so remember this. It's always different. If you grow, if you make red wine, you don't ferment in oak barrels, you ferment in a stainless steel tank or a concrete tank. Because you have to macerate the skin, you have to get the colour out of the skin to make the wine. And that's both quite impossible in a sealed uh, barrel. So you would age in red wine in barrels. But if you're going to make white wine, you've got rid of the skin, so it's no longer an issue. So you can ferment in a barrel, and an oak barrel is a remarkable thing, an oak barrel, you don't know how an oak barrel is made, but to bend the stays into place, you have to heat it, you have to char it, you normally do it over an open fire, and that caramelising, that vanillarising of the chip of the oak gives the wine a sort of buttery, toasty note, which defines quality white burgundy, like Versa or Willie Marche, and certainly is the backbone of things like Australia or California Chardonnay, and oak is a very dominant factor. We use mainly French oak to make, make wine, and the French oak forests are the most amazing in the world. I love the fact if you ever get a chance to go to the French oak forests, they're incredible. The story of another about this French, uh, French oak forest, they were all planted by Napoleon, who was a very clever, forward-thinking man, who planted the oak trees incredibly close together. And as you know, if you grow oak, if you plant a tree close together and lots of them, then the only gasp of sunshine is directly above you. And so the only thing those trees can do is go straight forward the path. And therefore, the, 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 you know, the, the, they are, the veins of the tree are very tight and very, very straight and very uniform. Which is great if you're making cricket bats, but also great if you're making uh, oak barrels. And of course, Napoleon did it because he wanted to make boat masts for ships. But he was thinking a long way forward, to be honest. But anyway, he did leave an incredible set of oak forests in France, and they are the best in the world. American oak, interestingly enough, is a different variety altogether and used a lot of winemaking. They're much wider planted and they do a lot more of this. So you find the wines have a different texture altogether. So this is New Zealand Chardonnay. So again, we're in a but with all the same, I suppose, um, natural characteristics and vineyard as you would have for the same one. Clarity and cleanliness is to find this wine. Um, but it does have a rounder salt flavour. It is made in the state of Tilt, but they use a little bit of a say this is pretty much an oak Chardonnay. So very clean and very fresh. Chardonnay has gone through its love hate relationship with the world. In the early 80s, we all fell in love with Chardonnay in the UK. Anyway, but as, as anything that is in fashion one day, one day it's going to be out of fashion. And Chardonnay was so fashionable that by default it went out of fashion for about 10 years. But now I think the world is recognising it's such a great grape variety, it's so flexible. But it certainly does that it's we are planting a lot more of it and people are drinking more and more. more. <coughs> I hope you enjoy it. It's the show. Any questions on that one? Uh, <laughs> Okay, you've 
argue that often sets the wrong step to go forward. But most, if you can grow soap in your block, you can grow pinot noir, you can grow cabinet soap, you could definitely grow chardonnay. But I would question the stock that came in to start with. Any, any question? Any other questions? I think one basic question we have uh, is on last week the guy. How are the Chardonnay grapes affected by where they are grown? I mean, the Chardonnay from France is one for New Zealand versus. What do you think are the characteristics of them? And how do they change? So are Chardonnays affected by the grapes grown? I mean, yes, more than more than any other white grape. So the concept of terroir is a word you've all heard, I'm sure. Terroir is a French word, really. We don't. Oh, have... you come us, if you okay, so, you know, so terroir is a French word. We don't use, have the word in English at all. But it is a holistic understanding that every single place has got a natural um, climate, aspect, soil, history of people that is indigenous to that site, it makes that site different to any other site in the world. And it is the background of an Appalachian controller system in France or a DOC system in Italy. It's a thing that says, this place is so unique that we don't want to call our white San Giovese, we call it Chianti Classica. We're not going to call it Chardonnay, we're calling it Chablis, because the wine from this area is so distinctly different from the wine from Puyfume, from Puyfuse, or from, you know, Macon, that calling it just Chardonnay isn't enough. So I would say, absolutely, Chardonnay is a great variety, which is incredibly malleable. Wherever you grow it, it responds in a very different way. That's well, more generic. Chardonnay is more generic, but these other names are more specific. Yeah, I think so, yeah. But the only thing you didn't know is Chablis, is the place where you use only Chardonnay. Okay, Chardonnay. That's all the confusing thing, you know. The Chablis yeah. is an area. No, young guys don't want to know. No, no, that's the very thing, the important thing to know, yeah. You're drinking a Chablis, you're drinking Chardonnay. Absolutely. Always. Any other questions? At Burgundy Red will be Pinot Noir also, so we know that, but yeah, good to know. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, okay. These young people, how, 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 much, how much wine do you drink in a week? Okay, do you drink more wine than uh, vodka and, and gin or no? Uh, whiskey or wine? Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. whiskey or wine. Oh. You have to go harder than wine. Well, I'm never going to tell you that alcohol is good for you. It's the wrong thing for me and my job to do. But what I do would say is that uh, we are, I was asked the other day about health quality and health and whether wine was good for you. Or bad. Yeah. And the oysters great for you. Yeah. 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 And there was this great thing in the, I don't remember it was, probably mid 80s, where in England we got really upset because we thought we were living relatively healthy lives. And across the channel, the French sat there eating a lot of cheese and a lot of foie gras, a smoking galois sans filtre, and, um, and drinking an awful lot of red wine. And they all lived about 15 years older than us. And we didn't like the French to start with, but we definitely didn't like them when we thought about that too much. And, um, and, and the research said the element that was different from their lifestyle was wine, was red wine. The anthocyanins in the red wine, well, well first of all they break down the fatty elements in your cholesterol, so if you have cholesterol problems they're relatively good. And a lot of those anthocyanins also have, in theory, and I'm very careful what you say here, because they are anti-carcinogenic, they're very good for cancer properties. It's why, if you know anybody who's gone through cancer issues, which I have in my family, a lot of them, a lot of times I recommend things like blueberry juice, high pigment, high anthocyanin juices, because those elements are supposed to be very good for those issues. So wine is supposed to be, I will say it's the most healthy. We made a very good point the other day as well, that if you, um, your father has been drinking wine a long time, but how is he? Thank you. And he's a pretty healthy man. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, I think it's the most convivial drink in the world. I think a bottle of wine promotes conversation, promotes discussion more than any other drink I know of. And, um, and it doesn't have the whiskey, and it doesn't have the kind of fattiness of, of beer, and it's a, it's a very social drink. So I think it's healthy, but I wouldn't say drink two bottles a day. But if you're drinking a couple of glasses, I think you're probably absolutely fine. Well, I, I'd like to add one thing to what you're saying. I go to, a, I've been to quite a few heart and health conventions in the US, and I know uh, Dr. Kansky, uh, he is one of the earliest guys who did the research even before uh, Serge uh, Renault. And, uh, and I met him first time uh, 12 years ago, he was 84 years old. And he walked straight, absolutely still alive. And he said, I've been drinking a glass of red wine with dinner for the last 40 years. Yeah. So whatever it means, I don't know. Message there. Well, any other questions? Thank you very much and thanks, Liam. Yeah. Wonderful. I learned a lot. One last question to us. Yeah.
Thank you very much. Yeah, please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.